arithmetic sequences. That's quite a mouthful. Luckily for us, there's another term for it. Linear number patterns. And luckily for you, you probably already know a little bit about linear number patterns. So even though the approach in this video might be slightly different, there's already a bit of common ground. Let's have a look. What are arithmetic sequences? Arithmetic sequences are created by adding or subtracting the same number from a term in order to obtain the next term in the sequence. So let's, let's make our own one. So let's start with five and let's add two. So if we add two to five, you get seven and seven plus two is nine and nine plus two is 11 and 11 plus two is 13. So that which we've got there, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, that is an arithmetic sequence. We started with a number and we added another number consecutively in order to get each next term in the sequence. How do you spot an arithmetic sequence? Arithmetic sequences are identified by their constant first difference. I've got a friend, Donnie, and Donnie's got a bank account. And Donnie has a bit of a problem. And his problem is that every single day he goes to Mr. Sweet and he buys three rands worth of sweets every day. It's an addiction, it's a problem. So three rand every day goes out of his bank account and into Mr. Sweet's pocket. So let's see, on day one, Donnie had four rand in his bank account. On day two, he had one rand because he spent three rand. On day three, he owed the bank two rand because he spent three rand again. And on day four, he owed the bank five rand because he just keeps spending money on sweets. So let's see there. If we look at the difference between term one and term two, we find that to go from term one to term two, we minus three. To go from term two to term three, we minus three. From term three to term four, we minus three. And the same for term four to term five. So that first difference there between the terms is equal to a constant minus three. And that's how we know that this is an arithmetic sequence. We've got a constant first difference. Can we find a formula for arithmetic sequences? So term two here, we obtained by taking four and subtracting three once. So for term two, we subtracted three once. In order to get term three, we started with four and we subtracted three twice. So to get term three, we subtract our constant difference twice. In order to get term five, we started with four and we subtract three four times. So for term five, we subtract our constant difference four times. So the pattern here is that if we want to get the nth term, Tn, we're gonna start with four and we're gonna add minus three to it, n minus one times. So for the fifth term, we added our constant difference four times. For the fourth term, we added our constant difference three times. So if we want our nth term, we've got to add our constant difference n minus one times. So that tn equals four plus n minus one times minus three is the formula we can use to generate our arithmetic sequence, which is Donnie's bank balance. Right, we've got there tn equals a plus n minus one d, which is the formula for any arithmetic sequence. And in this formula, A is equal to the first term, D is equal to that constant difference that we're adding, and N is going to be the position of the term that we're looking for. So what can we do with this formula? Well, we can answer some questions. So if somebody asked us, maybe the bank manager or something, I don't know, how much money is in Donnie's account on day 20? So we want to find out what term 
is going to be at position 20. So in order to do that, we've got to take 20 and we've got to substitute it into our formula. So again, because we're looking for the term at position 20 and n is the position of our term, we substitute in 20 for n. So we pop that into our calculator and when we compute it, we get minus 53. So poor Donny, after 20 days of his addiction, he's going to overbank 53 Rand. Another question that we might be asked is, after how many days does Donny overbank 101 Rand? Okay, 101 Rand is a term in our sequence. So we've got our sequence there that we're familiar with and we know that negative 101 rand, the amount that he owes the bank, is a term in our sequence. And the question is, what position belongs to that term? Where in our sequence is that term? So that position indicated there by that question mark, that's the number we're trying to find, right? So we're trying to find n, the position of the term, which is equal to negative 101 Rand. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our formula and we're gonna equate it to negative 101. We're going to equate it to the term that's been given to us. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for n. So you take the four across, it becomes minus four. So it's equal to minus 105. Divide through by minus three. So you get n minus one equals 35. And take the one across and you get n is equal to 36th. So what does that mean? It means that minus 101 is the 36th term in our sequence. So at position 36 you find the term minus 101. So in summary, arithmetic sequences are identified by their constant first difference. In order to find the formula for an arithmetic sequence, it's going to be in the form tn equals a plus n minus one times d, where a is equal to the first term of the sequence, term one. n is the position of the term that you're looking for, and d is equal to the constant difference between terms. How do we use it? If you're asked to find a term at position n, what you're going to do is you're going to substitute n into the formula in order to find the term. So if to find the 10th term, you're going to substitute in 10 in order to find t10. If you're asked to find the position at which a term is, so you're asked to find the term that is equal to 100, you're going to take your formula and equate it to that term, and then you're gonna solve for n. So you'll have something in the form of a plus n minus one d is equal to the term that's been given to you, and all you're gonna do is solve for n. If you profit from this knowledge by any means, don't spend all the money on sweets. <laughs>